Hello and welcome out to this week's episode of Chatter With You Matter, our mental health podcast. My name is Brandon Cross. I am here once again. And uh, before we get started, uh, once again, I just want to give a quick shout out to the Counseling and Wellness Center here on campus at Chico State University. They are located in the fourth floor of the Student Service Centers, and uh, their hours are every Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and they have same-day appointments where you can call in at 8 a.m. They also have scheduled appointments, and they also have crisis hours every single day, so please, please utilize that resource. It is here on campus. It is a free service provided to the students, and they are here for us. They want us to succeed, so please utilize that and um be sure to give us a like and a follow on all of our social medias we are you matter chico uh we are on twitter facebook soundcloud youtube uh check out our you matter website we got a lot of blogs and vlogs from our other interns as well so give us a follow give us a like um and i am here today with my co-host hello everyone my name is jeffrey garcia i am a recording arts major here in chico and um, thank you for being here today, Jeff. Um, thank you for having me. Yeah, this is uh, probably going to be one of our heaviest topics we've had uh, on this episode. And we've talked about some pretty heavy ones. I know we talked about LGBTQ. We've talked about PTSD. We've talked about family relations. But uh, this one might be up here uh, as one of the heavy ones. But, you know... Part of this is knowing that what we talk about is hard to talk about. None of it is supposed to be easy, but it is important for us to get these out there as much as we can. And um, uh, our topic today is kind of the experience of loss. Uh, It's probably something just about everyone has kind of gone through, but uh, everyone's story is a little bit different. So um, I, I know, Jeff, you've experienced some loss within your lifetime. Yes. So this year actually marks the... 10th year of, of my mom passing away through um, Burkitt's lymphoma. It is an extremely rare form of cancer, which is uh, located in the red blood cells or the bone marrow. And what happens is that the, the cancer cells spread out in the blood in the bone marrow and it goes out through her whole body eventually. Um, one of the main, like one of the most craziest, difficult things to experience was me witness, witnessing that uh, when I was in eighth grade, when I was 13 years old. It all began on the year 2009. The start of the year was, you know, just like any other year a kid would experience. Like, I had a, a really great mom. I was a mama's boy. So I was definitely, like, <laughs> invested. Like, I w- always wanted to make her happy, you know. Mm-hmm. So I did the little things. But eventually, like, she just started having the these signs and the symptoms of, like, like little hair loss in the shower and then like she would have huge migraines like very very often but the thing is throughout the year no one was able to diagnose it at the time Mm -hmm. up until like towards the end like mid-year i would say about august like we found a lead to where her um symptoms were leading to Mm -hmm. so eventually um they they said that oh yeah there's a there's a there's cancer in in your blood so from there uh, we under, as a family, we all like had to help her out. Yeah, and your we, brother we went and under, sister. Yeah, yeah. We went under the process of like her chemotherapy, and also praying the rosary every day, because at the time like we were very like very like spiritual family, mm-hmm. religious. So I would like we would pray every day. Um, pray the whole rosary. Like, I don't know if you know much about the rosary, but it's literally every bead contains a prayer and you get to pray through the whole rosary Mm -hmm. all the series of events but anyways um aside from that we would go through that i i witnessed uh a priest come and anoint my mom and uh anointing is pretty much one of the seven sacraments you receive in catholicism Mm -hmm. for catholics and uh yeah she got anointed and pretty much towards october that's when things got like really really intense because um i remember being at school that day of i got i got a call from the office uh they summoned me to the office to only tell me that like she has reached she is in the icu Mm -hmm. so when all this stuff happened um for anyone who's listening jeff and i uh we're from the same hometown 
we were at school together. We were in eighth grade. So I remember seeing you like going through this experience because, you know, where it gets around for school, I knew you were pretty quiet uh, during all that. And rightfully so. Mm-hmm. I mean, we were like 13 at yeah. the time. And like, this is such an intense experience to like go through. And it, and I can't sit here and say that I understand what you went through because I, you, you know, haven't experienced the loss of like my mom or, and you know no one had like cancer or anything but you know when we are such a young age how do you even try and cope and how do you even try and process exactly what is going on to be honest that's a good question but the way i went through it when i was a 13 year old being an eighth grader Mm -hmm. i just wanted to shut everyone out like i didn't want to hear people like family tell me in the waiting room like oh yeah like your mom's a really good person. Like, I, I already know that, you know? Yeah. What I wanted to hear was, like, I wanted to hear words of, like, everything's going to be okay. Because, like, when I was growing up, no one knew how to tell me that, I guess. Because I didn't, I didn't even know what to yeah. do. And do so. you think it might have just been being so young that maybe your older family just didn't think you really truly understood, like, what was happening? I feel like, in a sense, that that's the case. But yeah. a lot of it, too, is just... It's also just as hard for them as much as it is for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, like, always, like, we all go, we all cope different ways, right? Yeah. Like, so, like, I remember at the time that happening, like, my brother John was MIA. Like, Mm -hmm. he didn't want to be there either. Like, I know how he felt during that time. My brother and sister, we kind of had no choice but to be there because of the visitors Mm kind of situation. But uh, all in all, I feel like, probably look at it at a a different standpoint where like you know at least they're trying to be there for us yeah but by doing so like it's kind of hard to yeah but but looking back on it now you know 10 years later and Mm -hmm. you know we're in our early 20s and like do you appreciate at least like everyone at least attempting to like help you out because of course it like i said like it's hard for everyone and it's it's those situations where you really just don't know what to say Mm -hmm. to anyone so like how like what were the steps that like happened throughout all of that? Well, it definitely wasn't just like a you know I did this then I did this. Like it more it was more like, oh, my mom passed away. Like I I was pretty much just numb and I like closed a part of me off for a while. Mm-hmm. So like I didn't really like talk to people about it when it first happened because, shoot, <laughs> there was no one out there I could tell people. Cause no <laughs> other eighth grader. Or- can say the, the like their mother passed away and and i i know this might sound a little like selfless but like i also felt like i didn't want to tell the world because i didn't want that kind of attention yeah but if that makes you, any sense do you think it also stems from the fact that you feel like you just couldn't possibly relate to anyone that you feel like that there was no way you can try and make some type of connection with this experience you're going oh yeah through? oh yeah so that's why you felt like you kind of like shut yourself off because you felt like there's no way anyone's going to understand mm-hmm. that. And then you felt like it would just be better off if you just kept to yourself. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So yep. and and I remember um, when the entire situation happened, you know, like I said, work gets out, you know, classmates, we all talk and we had math class together at that time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I remember you going away for like a month then obviously so to deal with you know everything that went on but i remember the most is wanting somehow to help you to somehow be there for you but there was just no way that i knew how to at that time or that stage in my life and it comes from like again not understanding or even knowing like what to say so like what was it like you know when you were coming back to school and then like everyone was wanting to talk to you about this because we we are so young yes how do uh, you so deal with this i remember coming back after all that happening and to be honest i don't think i know I, I remember walking down the hall and everyone was just kind of silent no one really said anything mm-hmm. it was more just like hugs like just hugs because yeah. everyone knew at that point but uh well, did it help oh yes mm-hmm. yes so honestly i just I really appreciate just people just being there, just to be there. Like you don't have like people don't have to say anything as long as they're there and they're with me. Like that is already a lot already. Mm-hmm. Like I it was goes a long way. 
I was watching um, Winnie the Pooh, Eeyore, you know? Yeah. Just being there for someone, even if you don't know what to say, goes a long way. Yeah, that's all the difference. Yeah. yeah. And I think that is something um, a lot of individuals might just, like, be unaware about. That what, what I've learned, um, you know, being psych major, being, you know, in the world of, like, social work and everything, it's like, when people come to you asking for advice or people come to you with their problems or issues, a lot of the times I've learned that it's not people who are looking for answers to their situations. It's people just looking for someone who's going to listen. Mm. The, you know, like you maybe didn't need an answer or wanted an answer, but you just wanted someone to just listen to your experience and listen to what your thoughts and feelings are and how you're processing all of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Yeah. Like, at this point of my life, like, it took me a long time to grow out of that numb stage. Yeah. But, like, after getting more comfortable and, like, connecting with myself, finding my feelings again, mm-hmm. it really helped, like, with socializing with other people because, like, the fact that I, like, I accepted myself and this happening, like, it allowed me to move forward and keep on going, mm-hmm. you know? Like, I wouldn't be where I'm at now if I, I wasn't able to, like, open up to you or, like, close friends back at home, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's definitely a big a big part is that even though, like, friends at the time weren't there, in a way they were because, like, like what you were saying, like, just being there yeah. in that sense, it really helps. Yeah. But when we're, you know, so young and you're surrounded by your family during, like, the whole thing and, you know... When you look back on, like, the experience of going through that, what are some things, like, you wish you had known then that you know now? That's a good question. Like, just, like, you know, retrospectively looking back, you know, like, having, like, the knowledge and understanding that you do now, especially when it comes to, like, you know, understanding the feelings that you're going through and, like, the emotional toll that this has taken on you. Like, what what are some things, like, you wish had, like, happened, you know? What could have been some things that maybe your family members had told you uh, that could have helped your situation a little bit better? Oh, you know, maybe, like, words of, like, you know, it gets better with time. Mm -hmm. Or, like, if I heard that my mom was... Because at the time, they were kind of, like, shadowing everything as a kid. They didn't tell me what was really going on. They were like, oh, she's sick. She's this. Mm Mm-hmm. I actually learned that she she underwent through cancer through the people in the hospital, not even my family myself. So, mm-hmm. if my family were to at least like tell me everything straight up, like you know face value, I want to just take it in. Mm-hmm. Do you think it they were just really trying helpful. to like shelter you because it, they you were, were so young? I was the baby, so yeah. definitely they were trying to play that role. And I, I mean, mm-hmm. I think it would have been a lot better if they if they had just been up cut front it to the about chase. it and just been like, "Hey, this is kind of happening." Yeah. So. So, like, so it seems like, you know, when you're in these types of situations, you know, as young as you may be, you need to still be able to, like, be told what's happening. You need to be able to, so that way you can at least start to process Mm -hmm. things instead of just kind of being in the dark about it. Just taking everything's, everyone's words for it. Yeah. Saying every, yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, when you have, like, your aunts and uncles just, like, playing it off, like, oh, everything's fine, okay, but... You have nurses and doctors in the hospital telling you something else. And I, like I said, I, I couldn't quite possibly imagine even remotely the things you went to. And I'm very, like, grateful that you're here talking about it today. Thank you for having me once again, too. Yeah. Like. And so, like, before we, like, move on, is there, like, anything else that, like, you want to just, like, talk about? Like, feel free to just... I just want to give one big shout out to the social worker at the time helping us. Mm-hmm. Uh, I forgot her name already, but... Like, oh, like 10 years she ago. definitely kept like she glued my foundation together at the worst times like she was there to give us the decision to remove the assist mm-hmm. um so like it was one of the biggest moments because like from that point on it's like you know nothing's gonna be the same but yeah I want to give her a shout out because like that is one of the hardest things to do and honestly if it wasn't for her i believe that my sister and my brother wouldn't have been taking their psychology path as well Mm -hmm. like they they chose it too because i feel like they want to work with people just how she worked with us Mm -hmm. and yeah that's that's pretty much all all i want to say 
for that. Yeah. And so, like, how much, like, you know, obviously you loved your mom immensely and dearly. And I just, like, hope that, you know, she obviously loved you. Yes, and, 100%. Yeah. I was the baby of the family. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's not an easy thing. And like we said, it's going to be a heavy topic here mm-hmm. today. Mm-hmm. Um. So as we kind of like move on, it's still going to be like experience of loss. Um, I myself, um, I have experienced loss nowhere quite to the extent of a loss. A loss is a loss, you know. A- absolutely, hundred percent. But um, for me, it was more you know my great grandma. I was a senior in high school, uh, and you know she passed away. But at that time, you know she was like she was ninety two. Mm. She was kind of like in the hospital there for a couple of weeks prior and it's just kind of you know normal at like that age just because you know your body is old and it's just kind of going through the process and everything so that was like in my family at least like the biggest loss was my great grandma but it was such like a lighter toll just because when you have a relative who's like at that age and like they go into the hospital yeah. and it's kind of like you know, it, it's it's terrible, but it's the natural order of life. So, it, it, and that, like, you know, like, it sucked, but it kind of was just easier to manage that. It's nowhere near to the level. I think what I really, like, take from loss in general is that I think we need to learn that loss, like, death is a part of life. Yeah, it's natural. Than life itself. Because, like, the fact that we're so scared about dying... I think that's what creates this, like, how do you put it? Like, illusion of, like, oh, like, you know, once death happens, it's over. Mm-hmm. But then I feel like there's something after yeah. death, you know? Earlier you said that your family was a very spiritual family with the entire thing. And do you think that helped? Do you think having that belief in there? Oh, I think I think having faith definitely helps with that sense of, like, keep, like, hoping for something like in the afterlife like in that in that sense mm-hmm. i i myself am not as religious as i used to be but definitely spirituality still remains pretty big in my heart you know mm-hmm. like i believe the good morals that the religion holds mm-hmm. and that's still a part of me and also like the fact that we're able to have that little community at the time you know praying yeah. together yeah. i thought i thought that was really yeah. nice but you know as as time flies, th- things do change, perspectives change. Yeah. But my intuition and my heart still remains, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, so, you know, we talk about, you know, what happened with your mom. And, you know, I just briefly mentioned, like, my uh, great-grandmother. But mm-hmm. uh, another loss that not just myself have experienced, but you also were around uh for the entire thing as well because when we were seniors in high school it was early in senior year too like oh, within yeah. the first month i think it was uh where uh, a student at our school uh was in a car crash and unfortunately did not survive uh the situation uh, we don't want to say his name for obvious reasons uh but it, it was probably just, like, the biggest experience of loss that, like, I've had. Just, like, the shock of it all and just... Because it kind of just all happened out of nowhere. Yeah. And um, the person who did pass away in the car crash, I actually have known him since we were kids. Because we grew up playing soccer together all the time. You know, he was one of the best teammates I ever had growing up. I know uh, you also knew him quite well. Yes. Oh. Uh- him and I, we were actually in choir together as well uh-huh. like in middle school. Yeah, and like we, he was one of the most outgoing people ever. Yeah, so just much a energy. Genuinely good individual. And like I remember, the, like the day when it happened. Yeah, I remember. The whole school well. was quiet. Yeah, like, the the vibe on it. campus that day. Yeah, it was, was intense. Yeah, it was just like, it it was like just like everyone had just like this hole in their heart. Yeah, because this you know individual who everyone loved you know he was always making everyone laugh like we didn't we didn't think this was going to happen yeah. we we were gr- about to graduate going into college and then yeah. like for this to happen it's like wow yeah like it could literally happen to anyone at any given moment yeah cuz you don't think that when no. you know 
when you have that last conversation with him and you're just like you know saying your buys and everything like the thought doesn't even cross your mind yeah. that this is the last conversation I'm gonna have with him mm-hmm. and um, it, it was one of the hardest weeks of my life uh, was going through all of that um, you know talking with his mom and his dad and his brother whom I had also known from sports growing up and it just it, it was one of the hardest things to have to go through and especially like for us to be at such a young age for us to be 17 18 around that time and to have a friend of ours just unexpectedly uh, die like that it it just sent shockwaves through the school and it it was a hard time definitely was Uh and but i um with it you know i not trying to make it like all about me or anything but the reason um, that it affected me so much, uh, not just because he was such a good person, such a good friend, but he had passed away in a car crash. And uh, about four months before that happened, I think it was, I myself was in a very, very serious car crash where it was pretty, like, you know, I ended up crashing into a car, a fire hydrant, and a tree and everything. And it is just a absolute amazement to this day how I was just able to completely walk away from that like there is no reason or way that I should have been able to and so when the initial events happening with um, our fellow student uh, passing away there was that initial survivor's guilt that I played into um, and just because you know I was in this major car crash and then I just got to walk away from it but then for him to go through this car crash and then to not survive it, I really started questioning a lot about, you know, myself and like, why am I here? You know, why do I just get to walk away from this when he did not get to? And I just like, I just was so confused and lost and trying to find any type of explanation that I could to explain it. Mm. And it it was a rough time. But um, with all that, I think the best thing uh, that happened was how much our school, our teachers, our students, faculty, everyone from top down just all came together oh, yeah. in a way that I had never seen before. Very warming to see everyone go to the amphitheater. You remember that? Yeah, the vigil ceremony that, that we beautiful. had and everyone coming up and talking about stories. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, and it's just like, and I think that was the best thing. I, I know you said being around your family was like the best possible thing and the community you know community is definitely one thing that really helps yeah it's what brings everyone together it's when you go through hardships it's what everyone you know it builds the bonds it makes it stronger Mm -hmm. you know and i don't know about you but there are definitely some people that you know we kind of got closer a little bit after that just because we're all going through this oh yeah insanely you know emotional experience Mm. So, like, did you have, like, any thoughts, like, when we were going through all that, too? Because you were around it just as much as I was. I was definitely impacted. Uh-huh. I didn't know how to even express, like, yeah. I didn't know how to express it at the time. So, like, I remember everyone leaving the class for that day of his uh, bur- burial. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember still being in that class, like, what am I doing? Like, I just started questioning about life. Yeah. But then, like, what you were saying earlier about, like, how, you know, like, feeling guilty because, like, it should have been me. Well, like, th- what I've been, like, thinking over was, like, the idea of the universe and how the universe works. Like, we don't have we don't have all answers to everything. Mm-hmm. So, like. And we never will. And I feel like the, it's just the universe's way of telling us, like, whatever it needs to tell us. Because mm-hmm. there's definitely a reason why everything happens. Or everything happens for a reason. Yeah. And sometimes it's just really hard to try and accept that. Yeah. Though, the hardest part is accepting it for what it is or yeah. trying to put it to where, you know, what makes yeah. of it. Because too many times, you know, there's no justifiable reason, you know, why this 18-year-old just, right. you know, there, there's no way. And you, there, you can't explain it. And Mm-mm. I think that can also be like one of the hardest things is the fact that, you know, it's not a math equation or a chemistry formula where there is an there's, answer to it. Yeah. It's just, 
there's no answer to it and that can just be one of the most hollowing things that there are yeah definitely mm-hmm. you know like it, it's a it's a heavy topic you know i'm like getting a little teary eyed a little bit with and all everything is there anything else like you wanted to talk about or bring up oh uh, well i guess like a little takedown from what we're talking about i just wanted to say that like i say this to everyone but like just appreciate like appreciate every single thing that your parents have for you because you know to the people that don't have parents out there obviously we we wish to see them every day well for me of course so like i just wanted to like let the world know that like you know appreciate your like every little thing that your parents like offer you and give you because they gave you the life that we are in right now and like we couldn't have done it without them Mm -hmm. so yeah and, and, and not just parents, you know, your loved ones, your friends, your relatives, your cousins, like, appreciate, love, love everything. <laughs> That's my hiatus. Yeah. No, um, thank you so much for coming here today. I know it can't be an easy topic for you to talk about, Joe. It's never an easy topic, but I also appreciate you for having me. Thank you so much. Uh-huh. Thank you. Yeah. And we hope that, you know, our stories that we're talking about, our experiences, our struggles, our traumas, our emotional, you know, tolls and everything, we hope, you know, talking about these things can somehow help relate to individuals out there. Because when we're 13, you know, it's we don't know what we're supposed to be feeling. We don't know how we're supposed to act. And it's just... It, it's not easy at all Mm-mm. so and you know like it, it loss is something everyone has experienced at least some point in their life or at least will at some point as we said you know it's the natural order of life but i think the best we can do is just you know uh honor those that we have lost and just live on with the love that we have for them as much as we live can. through them yeah. just live as if they told you to. Yeah. <laughs> they're gone but never forgotten. A part of, of them course. will always be carried along with us. Life goes on. Days, days get, get brighter. Um, th- uh, if you've been listening for this long, thank you so much. Uh, once again, um, shout out to the Counseling Center here on campus, uh, located in the fourth story of the SSC. Uh, their hours are every Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, remember, same day appointments, uh, scheduled appointments as well as crisis hours uh so please utilize utilize the resource fourth story floor sorry fourth floor of the student service center and uh give us a like and follow on all of our social medias twitter facebook youtube soundcloud instagram as well as well as uh you matter chico our website where we got blogs and blogs from our other interns and uh we do a lot of polls about potential topics that we want to talk about so give those polls a look and maybe we get to a topic that you want to talk about uh so thank you so much once again we are chatter with you matter here at chico state and uh i hope you have a great rest of your day